the inconvenience store, but I'm dedicated to patronizing them, even though it's hard. Go by the little store in the morning, they ain't open yet. They late. How you gonna be late and you live upstairs in the same damn building? <laughs> Go by in the evening. On the way home from work, they done closed early and got the hell on. Go by lunchtime, the door locked. They got that little silly sign hanging on the door. We'll be back in 30 minutes. And they never tell you what time they left. Just the second minute or the 29th minute. Should I wait on your ass? And if the sign say, we'll be back, that's more than one person. Why couldn't the sign say, I'll be back? One of y'all could have stayed here to help my ass. your ass for. They're trying to sell you a bunch of substitutes. The substitutes don't make no kind of sense. You want sugar, they're trying to sell you flour and grits. You want Pepsi, they showing you the Pep's blue ribbon. All them ignorant signs hanging on the wall, out of this, out of that, out of order, out of service, out of commission, out of change. We'll accept nothing larger than a $20 bill. You ain't got $19 worth of stuff on the shelf. Out of business, that's what you really ought to be out of out of my mind for going out of my way to support you. But I'm dedicated. I'm determined to patronize my own struggling folk. I got enough money now to eat wherever I want. Oh, I can go to fancy restaurants and eat a bunch of stuff I can't even pronounce. Got to point to it on the menu to keep from embarrassing myself. I can go to fancy restaurants where the waitresses walk up to the table and respect you. Ask, what would you like, sir? But that ain't where I choose to go. I go to the little old broke down, struggling family owned soul food restaurant where they treat you. That's where I go. Where they treat you like you ain't worth a damn. Like they really don't even want you in the damn place. Where the waitress just walk up to the table and stand there and look at you. You don't say nothing. You got about 30 seconds to order something, but she just walk off. You must not want a damn thing. You know what you brought yourself in for? To go. I don't go being quiet. You don't get no us to trying to help nobody. I be raising, you know, I be raising hell when I hit the dope. You know things gonna be run backwards. Oxtails, 14 or $15 a plate. You can buy a whole damn ox for about $9.75. I be raising hell asking questions like, how come it ain't no screen? On the screen dough. What about all these damn flies flying around in here? Should have brought me a fork, a knife, a spoon, and a fly swatter to kill some of these damn flies. Where the napkins at? Where the rest of the tablecloths at? What's all this sticky stuff on the damn table? How come my table won't be still? How come my chair wobbling? I got to balance myself up here. You get a hard chicken. Why is the cook and the waitress putting the food on my plate with our hands? You got no utensils in this damn place? Why don't somebody sweep them cobwebs down off the wall? Where the rest of the ceiling tiles at? Where the light bulbs and the lampshades at? How come the ceiling fan ain't got no blades on it? Why don't you cut it off? It ain't cooling a damn thing. Just clicking, irritating my ass to death. What kind of bug is that over there? What kind of bug is that? What about the bug on the wall? Is he dead? Just sweep his dead ass down. He's alive while he's standing still looking at my table. Did he order something up in here? Was it for him or was that the to-go line on the wall? Is he at my table? Maybe I'm at his damn table. How come you got to cut through the kitchen to get to the bathroom? Where are you going through the kitchen? You see, the cook ain't got no net or nothing on her head. That's the dish rag wrapped around her sweaty neck. Her teeth sitting on the side of the pot. I know she ball hit it, but she got dandruff. It's falling over in the chicken grease. Then the other day, once I got to the bathroom and finished doing what I had to do, then I looked up and realized wasn't no toilet paper or nothing in the damn bathroom. I left my pants down round my ankles. Got up, walked back into the kitchen, snatched that dish rag off her neck, wiped myself and threw it back at her.
day I brought myself right back to the same damn place. Cause I'm dedicated. I'm committed to patronizing my own struggling folk. I got the right attitude. And that's what you got to have. You can be smart and good looking, but if your attitude ain't right, you really ain't going far. Never been in a... People can read your attitude. You ever been in a club or a restaurant and the waitress come to wait on you, be looking good and smart, well talking, articulate, but just got a funky disposition, bad spirit, bring you everything like you asked for it, but when you get it, you be afraid to eat it or drink it because you're acting so damn crazy. When the bill come, I be trying to find something wrong so I can just jump on it. But usually they're halfway smart and everything is right, but I still cringe when I got to tip them. But you can go again and get an old ugly broke down waitress, clothes hanging all off her, one eye, three or four eyebrows, no teeth but braces on her gums, got on a socking on one foot and a stock, a sock on the other foot, foot, but just as nice as she could possibly be. Not too smart now. Take a long time to get what you ordered, and then when she bring it, she be done brought the wrong stuff, but happy to take it back and try to get it right. When the bill comes, you got to scratch out a bunch of ignorant stuff she done added on the ticket. Girl Scout cookie fund for her daughter, building fund at her church. But I still tip her, because she had the right attitude, and that's what you got to have. There was an election in Georgia about four or five years ago, and it came down to a runoff. Came down to two candidates, Julian Bond or John Lewis. Julian Bond was clearly the most qualified, but his attitude wasn't right at the time. He was qualified, tall, light-skinned, when that was in style. <laughs> Way to have Had a silk tie, silk shirt, $1,000 suits and shoes, but something about his attitude just wasn't quite right. Here come the other little old candidate, John Lewis. About four feet tall, big swole up, wrinkled up, ashy head. Ain't seen no lotion since the civil rights movement. Two big chapped lips, look like a valentine heart, turned sideways and stuck on his face, but it had the right attitude. Old pinstripe suit, missing half of the stripes. One sleeve was short, one was long, run over wingtips and a crocheted tie, but you just felt like he was on your side. Now you couldn't understand what John Lewis was talking about, but you felt like he was on your side. John Lewis couldn't even pronounce the word campaign. He made a speech and was calling it champagne. <laughs> made a speech. John Lewis in his speech said this, champagne ain't about where you put your ears and ass is in your sentences. This champagne ain't about being articulate. This champagne ain't about how you use your prepositional phrases. This champagne is about liberty and juices for all. That's what people need. Liberty and juices. Just like the prostitution of the United States says, liberty and juices for all. And until all peoples get their liberty and juices, this will not be a safe sorority in which to live. John Lewis won by a landslide. Because they had the right attitude. And that's what you got to have. I got it. That's why I love the civil rights days. Back then, we had the right attitude. We fell for the oldest trick in the book. Divide and conquer. That's what happened. They created women's lib. Diluted the civil rights movement in our own homes, and it bombed. That's what happened. Women's lib wasn't even a separate issue. They threw in the curveball, should you have to wear a bra or not? That ain't nothing to have no damn march about. Them your damn titties. You don't want to wear one, don't wear one. I like to look at them. You're 45 or 50 and they're drooping a little bit, tuck them in your waistband and get the hell on. <laughs> if you're 85 and they're dragging on the sidewalk, shooting off sparks and shit, them the old titties. The only issue was equal pay for equal work. That's common sense. Anybody that does the same job deserves the same money. That means if a white brother drives a truck and delivers 20 TVs to a destination, anybody else that does the same job deserves the same amount of money. Now you don't have to succumb to the culture, that ain't the job. The job is to deliver the TVs. So if a Chinese man drives a truck, he gonna do it his way. The Chinese ain't that tall, can't see over the dashboard that good. 
probably run over a couple of pedestrians on his way to the warehouse, but if he delivers the TVs, you owe him the same amount of money. If a woman drives a truck, sure she gonna do it her way. She gonna run some people off the highway in the morning. Cause she be getting dressed while she driving. Putting on lipstick and taking curlers out of hair and stuff. And then when she get to the warehouse, she gonna park the truck all up on the curb and stuff. But if she delivers the TVs, you owe her the same amount of money. If a brother drives a truck, if a brother drives a truck, sure he gonna do it his way. Gonna be some chicken grease on the steering wheel when he get there. Gonna be some Afro sheen on the back window where he took a nap. May have some watermelon seeds on the dashboard, some naked chicken bones on the floorboard, and some hot sauce bottles on the seat. He gonna be late as hell. And when he get there, he ain't gonna have all the TVs. deducting for all the stuff that's missing, you owe him the rest of the same amount of money. I love the civil rights day. Back then, we had it different. We had it going on, we had it different. And we were protesting back then about the right thing. Back then, we were protesting about things that really mattered. And now, a lot of times, I think we get caught up with a whole bunch of stuff that don't matter. I turned TV on the other day. I saw some folk in Chicago, black folk just raising hell about somebody cutting down some trees. Some trees? Who give a damn about no damn trees? Every time I look at a tree, I think about one of us getting a hung, a lipstick. I wish they cut down every damn tree in the United States. I'd like to stand on my front porch in Georgia and wave to some folk in New York or Mississippi somewhere. There's flat land everywhere. I don't care nothing about no damn trees. Then I saw some folk just raising hell talking about animal rights. Animal rights? We ain't got all our rights yet. They got time. some mules in the circus jumping off a diving board into a little pool of water, huh? We plowed behind them damn mules for seven or eight hundred years. Sun up to sun down, mules just dragging us through the field. Did the mules ever say anything on our behalf? The mules were laughing at our ass. Let's laugh at the mules a while, let them jump. I hope they missed the damn pool. I'm telling them about them mules, and I didn't like that movie they made either, Free Willy. A damn fish, free my Uncle Willie. This man been locked up for five years. Uncle Willie said he didn't do nothing. I'm dying crazy.